WWE might be stealing AEW's TV deal with Warner Bros. Discovery, and it might all be because of CM Punk. You see, WWE has been looking to close a new TV deal for Monday Night Raw, and it seemed like Warner Bros. were out of the picture that was until Dave Meltzer said they were back in discussion to acquire the rights. This is what Dave Meltzer said. The WWE is shopping the Raw rights around and Warner Bros. Discovery obviously being one of them, but Warner Bros. seems to be dead and it's not dead anymore and that's the basic thing with Punk there and everything like that, it's just not dead. It's not like people should go on and like, oh my god, this and that with AEW, there's no way of knowing anything more other than that they did have a meeting and it's not dead, that is all. WWE as far as the Raw deal, the talk is that they're finalizing and the belief is that they're finalizing pretty soon. To make things even more interesting, PW Insider reported that Triple H and Nick Khan actually had a meeting with Warner Bros earlier this week and that is what Dave was talking about. The report says, this past Monday morning, TKO's Mark Shapiro as well as WWE's Nick Khan and Triple H were in New York City at the Warner Bros Discovery headquarters meeting with Warner Bros Discovery executive Bruce Campbell about potentially moving Raw to WBD. The WWE contingent met with Campbell for several hours Monday morning and according to WWE sources, there are still other suitors. Triple H and Nick Khan were in LA several weeks ago meeting with potential partners. They are seeking a major increase in raw media rights. With all this being said, it's still worth mentioning that this is all contingent on whoever lands a deal with the NBA TV rights because this is what Sean Ross Sapp said about that situation. Some things are taken into consideration regarding WWE, AEW, and Warner Bros. Discovery. Warner Bros. and USA are both in play for NBA rights. That will be a big domino to fall. Ari Emanuel on the TK Investor call cited that PFL is on ESPN even though UFC is as well. PFL just signed a multi-year extension. With all of that being said, it is just still wild to think about the fact that CM Punk got Warner Bros. back in the mix and that might make him the greatest signing of all time for WWE. Honestly, the company is looking to get a $2 billion five-year deal and if that happens because of CM Punk opening up those conversations again, then you can seriously make the argument that this was definitely worth the investment and like I said, this was the greatest financial signing of all time. As we know from his run with AEW, Warner Bros. is a huge fan of CM Punk and they understand the drawing power that does come with him. The fact that Tony Khan let him walk away for Jungle Boy is still the worst decision I've ever seen in my life. I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it. Speaking of Tony Khan, there was a new report that came out about AEW and it is not good news. According to Nick Hausman, this is what he said about AEW and the vibe. The vibe we have been given is that AEW is in danger of not being renewed by Warner Bros for TNT or TBS. If this becomes a reality, this is terrible news for all elite wrestling. I hope this isn't the case because a lot of people would lose a job and that would suck. It would not be cool to see that happen. If WWE ends up signing a deal with Warner Bros though, I wouldn't be surprised to see AEW not get renewed. Why would Warner Bros want to have AEW and WWE when WWE clearly does a lot better. Things only go from bad to worse when you also see the report that said AEW is estimated to lose $34 million in 2023. Things are not looking good for the company and hopefully they can pick things up and have a stronger 2024 because this is sad to see. Like I said, a lot of people's jobs are on the line and you don't want to see anyone lose their jobs. Anyways, let's get back to the topic of CM Punk for a minute. Not only is he doing really well with his ratings, the views on YouTube and, and Twitter and all those other places and his merchandise sales are through the roof, but he's been down in NXT helping out with talent. PW Insider reported this. CM Punk is back at the WWE Performance Center today, training and holding court with NXT talents. There was a massive, genuine excitement at the PC yesterday when Punk surprised everyone by showing up and spending the day with talents. It's looking like coming back to WWE wasn't just about making money and having dream matches with the likes of Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, maybe a Logan Paul, even an LA Knight. Punk clearly has a long-term plan to help out with the future of WWE, and that is honestly just the coolest thing to see. When he was in AEW, Punk reportedly loved helping out talent, but some of them didn't want to hear it from him because there's a lot of beef with the whole Cole Cabana thing. Even when he was booking Collision, a lot of fans were liking that show more than Dynamite itself. It's nice to see that talent are listening and he's making an impact behind the scenes. 
I could totally see him running NXT with William Regal in the future when he does retire from the ring, and that would be really cool to see. You got Triple H and Shawn Michaels running WWE Raw and SmackDown, then you got CM Punk and William Regal running NXT. That is just wild stuff. So far, this return is going really well. Hopefully, it stays that way. In other news, we have some good news about AJ Styles. PW Insider is reporting that he's expected to be back on SmackDown tonight. I'm not really sure what they're going to do with him, because if you remember correctly, he was feuding with the Bloodline before he left, and many people expected him to feud with Roman Reigns for the Royal Rumble, but that does not seem to be the plan anymore. Randy Orton is going to most likely wrestle Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Championship at the pay-per-view, and I'm sure a lot of people want to see that match more than AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns. Hopefully, we can see AJ versus Roman on like a SmackDown episode. That would be dope. Anyways, I could see AJ floating around for a little but maybe having a number one contenders match with Randy Orton, those two always have a good match. And after losing that match, he could enter the Royal Rumble. He really doesn't need too many major plans right now. The main event scene is so stacked. Honestly, it's kind of hard to even get in there and squeeze yourself in there, but it will be really nice to see him back because AJ Styles is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. In a recent interview, Cody Rhodes was asked about MJF potentially joining WWE in the future, and Cody Rhodes said that he thinks one day we will see MJF in WWE. And then he went on to say this, one thing I'm proud of him for doing is if you notice, he's put on a lot of muscle. And when he does make that jump, and I don't know when that is, if he does make that jump, if he does come to WWE, he'll have to stand across from the big boys. Watching him grow physically, it seems like he maybe knows where his future lies. I would love nothing more than to see MJF in WWE, but I don't think that's gonna happen for a long time. Reports came out saying that he already signed an extension with AEW a while ago. I don't think that he would be the AEW champion right now if he was going to actually do the bidding war with AEW and WWE. It's a shame for WWE fans, but he does seem really happy with the company and he's making a lot of money and he's their top star. Also, with him being so young, he could honestly stay with AEW for five more years and then finally come to WWE. And even at that point, he'll have a decade before he even needs to think about retirement. So. I agree with Cody Rhodes, MJF will be in WWE someday, but that day is very far from today. And to end this video, we need to talk about Roman Reigns and his new achievement. He's officially been the Universal Champion for over 1,200 days. Even though the Tribal Chief doesn't show up too much nowadays, he's still the champion. And he's been the champion for over 1,200 days. That is crazy stuff. He'll be on SmackDown tonight, so it's going to be must-watch TV. And honestly, a lot of people are questioning, will he beat Hogan's record and hold the title for over 1,800 days? We'll have to wait and find out, but I don't think that's a great idea. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you all in the next video.